Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're tackling uh, a really critical global contest. Yeah, the U.S. and China. Exactly. Battling for dominance in critical minerals. We've been looking at a discussion from the Skilling's Mining Review, and it really paints a picture. It does. It makes it clear this isn't, you know, just about mining in the traditional sense. Right. The source calls it a brutal high stakes game, even a Cold War 2.0. Wow. Cold War 2.0 mm. and the battlefield. It's the supply chain itself. Precisely. Which brings us to the core issue, doesn't it? China's position. They have this huge, almost controlling share of the processing. That's the key bit. Over 60 percent globally for rare earths and, well, massive influence in Lithium, graphite, cobalt refining, too. All the stuff you need for basically all future tech. Exactly. Batteries, wind turbines, electronics, you name it. So how did they get there? The source talks about this vertical integration weaponized. What does that actually mean? Well, it's pretty strategic. They don't just dig it up themselves necessarily. They import raw stuff from all over the world. Then they do the complex, often messy refining part and sell the finished high value minerals back to everyone else sometimes at a premium. So they control that crucial middle step, like uh, owning the refinery, not just the oil well. That's a good analogy. It gives them immense control. And obviously the West is, well, starting to push back hard now. Mm -hmm. The US, UK, Australia, they're pouring serious money into breaking that dependence. We saw the US Inflation Reduction Act mention, that's what, $369 billion? A huge chunk aimed at clean energy and crucially, these minerals. It's a massive signal. And it ties into things like the Mineral Security Partnership. Ah, yes, the MSP. That's the U.S.-led group, right? With the U.K., Australia, Canada, Japan, the EU. Yeah, all trying to build these supply chains that essentially go around China. It's about creating alternatives, securing their own access. And it's not just talk. There are actual projects like Linus Rare Earths in Australia. Right, Linus is significant. They're basically the only major commercial player doing rare earth processing outside China. And they're getting U.S. Defense Department money to expand. That tells you how strategic this is seen. Absolutely. It's defense level critical. Plus, you see the U.K. creating its own strategic stockpile, cobalt, nickel, tungsten, hedging their bets. OK, but uh, there's a catch, isn't there? The source flags the difficulty of achieving this independence. Yeah, this is the tricky part. Refining rare earths in particular is well, it's messy. How messy? Toxic, energy intensive, produces difficult waste. The source calls it toxic, expensive, and politically unpopular. Nobody really wants this processing in their backyard. Hmm, I see. So building this independent capacity isn't just about money. It's about dealing with the environmental fallout. Exactly. And that leads to the other potential problem. Which is? Cost. If the West moves production away from China's established, efficient, albeit perhaps less environmentally stringent facilities, then things like EV batteries, solar panels, all that clean tech might get more expensive. It's a real possibility. So you have this tension. Do you want secure supply chains or do you want the cheapest possible clean tech right now? It might be hard to have both, at least in the short term. So the takeaway seems pretty stark. The source puts it as whoever controls minerals controls tech and whoever controls tech controls tomorrow. Yeah. It really frames this as a foundational battle for future economic and well, technological power. And China's had a head start playing the long game, as the source says. Definitely. They've been building this position for years. Now the U.S. and allies are, you know, finally playing catch up. But time is obviously a factor. How quickly can these alternative supply chains actually be built and scaled up? That's the multi-billion dollar question, isn't it? The speed here could really shape the global power dynamic for decades. So it boils down to this clash. The desire for secure, maybe friend-shored clean tech versus the immediate costs and environmental hurdles. That seems to be the central dilemma right now. Okay, so something for you, our listeners, to think about. What are the deeper, maybe hidden, costs and consequences of this minerals race? This kind of new Cold War fought over materials we often take for granted. It's definitely a space to watch.